everyone, I'm Phoebe Wilde with Board Game Geek at Gen Con 2016, and I'm here with Grant Rodiak from Portal Games, and he's going to tell us all about Cry Havoc. Yeah, this is uh, Cry Havoc, two to four players, asymmetric, card-driven war game. It's been very popular at the con, as you can see, somebody tried to fight me for this one. <laughs> uh, it was bludgeoned a bit in the combat. Yes. So. This is a game set up for two players. It's the back side of the board. So we have the machines here. There you go, machines, and we have the humans. This is the Trog's home planet, so we're gonna interact with them as well, even though they're not an active player. So the cool thing about this game is that it moves very quickly. Every round we're gonna resolve an event, and then we're all gonna take one action at a time until we do three actions total. After that, we're gonna fight battles, and uh, I left that in this box, so we're gonna open that up in just a second. So, the cool part about the game is it's all about hand management, it's all card driven, there's no dice in the game. The three main actions is that you're going to move your dudes on the map, you're going to add more dudes to the map, and you're going to add structures to blow up your enemy's dudes on the map or support your guys. So the way you do that, and I would just place it like that? Uh, yeah, so if you just cool. hold them uh, in the middle of the board there. So to take an action, I would discard any number of cards, and if I wanted to move, for example, I would get one, two, three, four, five, six movement points. Yep. I can move six guys one space each, one guy six spaces. So here I could do one, two, three, for example, and I could do four. Now when you first come onto the planet, there are good things, which are these. So I flip that over, and this gives me two bonus units from my reserves. So that's kind of nice. That's sort of a free recruit. This is just a straight bad thing. This is the Trog's home world. So we're going to reveal this, and we're going to put two of them on here. Now the good thing is they also come with crystals. That's what we're fighting for. However, now we have a battle, and I'm the aggressor. So that's how you would do movement. You cash it in, you get as many moves as you want. Similarly with recruitment, you can discard as many cards as you want for the unit icon, and you can add that many units to your base. So here I would get four of my units, and I can then reinforce there. Finally, I can build structures. Now the machines are all about structures. They actually have five unique ones where everyone else only has three. Where did I put my cards? Uh, you there, right here. Cool, great. Um, so here, I would get, I could spend three um, uh, wrenches to build. Most of these structures just cost two to build, and then they cost one to activate. And the cool things about this card is that I actually get a bonus point, which we would tick up to do that. So I'm going to build an orbital sniper position because I control this place over here. And because I went ahead to activate it, with that extra one, I can activate at the same turn as place. I can use my orbital sniper to kill a guy on the other side of the map, which now makes this three against one. That'll be a much better battle. Um, although I just cheated that because there's a battle, I could not remove that guy. But if, let's say, this guy was here, I could kill that guy. Here, I would need shred drones, so I'm already cheating in my own demo. So that's the movement. You can also, there's a light deck building mechanism, you could draw more cards that go into your hand. Um, and this is pretty cool because, first off, they all associate with uh, some of the basic actions. So they give you more movement points, more build points, things like that. However, if you look on the board, you have here, you have mountains and desert. Uh, mountain and desert as well. This is uh, jungle and ocean. You can use those cards for their battle tactics um, in battles with that region. So here I could use an ocean battle tactic here. And that's like training your units and equipping your units to fight there. So this is like giving them a navy or sort of making them more like navy seals. Um, so as you go to certain regions, you're going to want to add cards through actions to make yourself better in those regions. And then there's the trade-off of, do I use my cards for resources or do I use my cards to make myself better in battle? So that's the rough way you're going to move about, take your turns. So let's check out how the battle system works. Thanks. And I'm going to dig through here, Amy, and I apologize for the mangled box. I did have to fight a man for it. <laughs> We're going to get this out of the way. So, and where should I put this? Is it, can you see it here if we put it here? Yes. Should be fine. We won't be able to zoom in on it too much, but that'll be fine. Cool. Great. So, there are three different battle objectives we're fighting over. And this is all card driven. In a battle, it's not just uh, win everything or lose everything. Uh, imagine you're at a commander sitting in your drop ship and you're like, at all costs, we need to hold that space. Or just kill them all, it's the only way to be sure. Or you can try to capture important targets for intelligence. So what happens is each of these objectives will resolve and uh, give us a bonus for winning that objective. So in this top one, if I have the most units versus the opponent, Whoever has the majority, they will immediately score two points and they will take control of the region. 
This means that they'll be able to build structures there in the future, mm -hmm. and their opponents must leave the region. Even if you have no units left, they have to leave. We you know, gave our lives in order to make that happen. Ty goes to the defender, which in this case would be the Trogs. If we fight here, whoever wins will capture an enemy unit from this board. So here I have more than him. I would capture this Trog unit. He then goes in front of me, and I get recurring points for every prisoner. Now you could spend points to get him back, but uh, you have to think about that trade-off. Uh, and if you both tie here, you just cancel each other out, and sometimes that's better than not doing it. And then here at the bottom, let me put some more units on the board so you can see. Yay, lovely miniatures. <laughs> Down here at the bottom, what happens is you simultaneously kill units for every guy here, and you get a point for that. And it just resolves because it's the end of the battle. So here I would kill two units and get two points. He would kill one unit and get one point. So there's the placement part of it, but there is also the tactics part of it. So what happens is the attacker places cards first, then the defender places cards. Uh, the attacker places units first, then the defender places units. Then using the cards in our hand, we can sort of change the state of the battle. So if we're fighting here, get the jungle, and like here you can look at, so like there's like an ocean and a jungle. And tactics cards do things like move up to two units from one objective to another. So you can sort of move around and outflank them. Or um, I could say, I'm gonna choose an opponent's uh, unit and they must move it. So you'd have to move this guy somewhere else. So you can move up there. You can add units from your reserve. If you have units that are like in support of your unit, so like right here where they're next to him, you can add units from adjacent regions. So there's only about five or six of them and they don't change it in crazy ways, but you could sit there and you can completely outmaneuver your unit and your opponent. And the cool part is that with the tactics, if you plan for it, um, three guys can be five guys. But again, it's not that you're trying to win or lose the battle, but you may really want that territory, because if you hold the territory, you score the crystals and get points for that. Or you can capture the prisoner, and by the end of the game, if you have five or six prisoners, it's six prisoners every round, but also you and your opponents all have finite unit pools, so you permanently reduce their reserve. So the game is all about taking control of the territory, trying to uh, win fights where you think you could win them, maximize the crystals you can earn, capture prisoners to really hinder them, and customizing your deck and forces over time. The other cool thing is the game is really asymmetric. It's very different. At the start of the game, when you're new, you all play with just one of the default skills. But over time, there's actually several skills in the game. You can play with two or even three of them. And uh, for the machines, for example, the machines can actually move their structures. So as the front line moves, I can move my structures to where I need them on the map. I can also do things where I can convert men into buildings and vice versa. The trogs, when you play them in full player, they have ways where you can eliminate your units from the board and you place more of these tokens that have a fog of war. So you can slowly move them around the map and resolve them as you go. The humans have ways to just quickly take over territories that they're not even present in. They can get extra battle cards for every battle, so they want to fight as much as possible. So they all play very differently, they win very differently, and you can play the game over and over and just really try to figure out how to make each faction tick. And again, this is the two-player board. On the other side is a three- and four-player board that's even bigger and more spread out. And there are a total of four factions? Four factions in the box. Um, if you're playing with two and three, nobody plays the Trogs. They act as sort of a, uh, this is their homeland, this is yeah. their region. Uh, and so you basically have to fight them off as you move through and fight then your opponent for the crystals and the territories. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that is Cry Havoc. Check it out. If you're a Gen Con, it's all gone. It is quite gone. Uh, but where can people get it if they're interested in it? It should be available in about October at yeah. retail. Um, it has been selling very quickly from what I understand. So if you like the game, if you're interested in it, you should get it in October. There you go. Uh, well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure.